So this video is going to finish up our lecture from Monday. Our last bullet point on the agenda for Monday's lecture was probability from a discrete uniform distribution. What I'm essentially going to do is provide the justification for this specific probability function. And the idea is this probability function comes from the discrete uniform distribution. So let's just make believe that we have a sample space of 1 through 6, the integers 1 through 6. And we will focus on the function, I mean the set, A, consisting of just the even numbers. And I'm drawing it in different colors just to try to help make this point. So we have now defined probability as area under a function and as an expectation, specifically an expectation with respect to the indicator variable defined on the set A. So all I'm going to do is connect the dots from this specific probability function to what we've learned so far about expectations. So the expectation of the indicator function looks like the sum, because our sample space is countable, we have a discrete uniform distribution, and hence expectations turn into sums of the function in the argument, that is the indicator function, times the density function. And I'm going to leave the density function for the discrete uniform distribution um, just as f for a little bit longer, but then we'll fill in the spaces. So notice all we're doing is multiplying this indicator function, which only takes on the value 1 if the argument x is in the set A and 0 otherwise. So essentially, this indicator function is either going to leave f by itself, that is when x is in the set A, this is just a 1, and 1 times the density function is just the density function, or the indicator function is going to be 0 when x is not in the set A, and then it'll cancel out this density function. So really, this indicator function is just restricting us to elements x in the set A. So if we were to look at this in a picture, we'd have x on the x-axis. That makes sense. And some value for f of x along the y-axis. And because it's a uniform distribution, whatever value this is, is the same for all elements in the sample space. So as we have it, we have the set A to be the points 2, 4, and 6. And so then the rest of S is 1, 3, and 5. So notice this sum is really just saying whenever we are in the set A, that is at the point 2, that is at the point 4, or that is at the point 6, then we should add up the density function. And for all the other elements in the set, in the sample space, the indicator function is going to be 0. So 1 won't contribute anything, 3 won't contribute anything, and 5 won't contribute anything. But the points 2, 4, and 6 will contribute the density function. So really, this is x in A of the density function. Because when x is in a, the indicator function is 1. And when x is not in a, it's 0. So we can just rewrite this sum by skipping the indicator function and acknowledging that we're only going to add up the density when x is in a. Now, here's where we're going to start filling in the density function. In the example we have, we have 1 over 6 minus 1 plus 1 which is just 1 over 6 for the density function. 
in general, we have one over B minus A plus one. But notice that this denominator here is really just counting the number of elements in the sample space when the sample space consists of consecutive integers. So really, this is just 1 over the cardinality of the sample space when S consists of consecutive integers. So this density function here is just the sum of x in A, 1 over the cardinality of S. This S has no x's in it, so we can pull the entire 1 over S outside the sum. We get 1 over S times the sum of x in a, and all we're doing is adding up the integer 1 for all elements x in A. Well, if all we're doing is adding up 1 each time x is in A, we're essentially just counting the number of elements in A. So you see what this probability function is really doing is just specifying the expectation of an indicator function for the discrete uniform density where the sample space consists of consecutive integers. So this is our first example of a probability function. Here is our example of the probability function. And the justification for it comes from exactly as I said before. It's an expectation of an indicator function where we are calculating probability by adding up area under a density function. So I hope this uh, last slide is working for you. I tried to do two things in one slide where we have the general notation going on here and a specific example going on here to highlight the general notation. And that is the conclusion of our lecture from Monday.